might be a breeze, a leaky trip or bolts and seas. Chop, talk, and help with ease if it doesn't fit. Gotta buy it. If it runs the road or coach your food, broken in half or a little skewed. Chop, talk, help now, listen, dude, if it doesn't fit. Welcome back to If It Doesn't Fit. So here we are, working on the uh, crazy mismatched golf cart side by side, whatever you want to call this thing. Um, I'm gonna just try to see if I can get to a point where get this as short as I can, trim off whatever I can trim, and maybe we can have the quad frame bolted to the golf cart frame tonight in this session. Um, see what we can do and get going. Okay, getting closer. Did a little trimming in front of the frame, so I cut some more off the front of the bike frame. I've cut some, these two angles I've cut out here. Um, looks like here, that if I can get this underneath there, I could probably pop two holes in there and start off with my bolting process. These holes are threaded into the bike frame. There is another one right behind there. Too bad the spacing wasn't different between those two brackets, but maybe I can... Oh, we'll see. Maybe I'll make a custom cross member there or something out of steel. Anyways, we'll get that up. And tires are hitting here now, because like I said, I'm trying to shorten this thing up as much as I can, but I'm almost at my my 10 inches in the back here to my tire, it's close. If I can move this guy a few more inches forward, I think I have to cut this. I was hoping to use this for my battery tray, but uh, I may have to modify it a little bit. That's where the original leaf springs were bolted on, right there. So I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut this guy away. I'm not gonna totally remove it. I'm just gonna cut back to the Keep the, the rest of this angle. It's kind of like an S channel. I'll cut this out along here, make room for the tire, and push this even further forward. See if I can get those to get underneath the angle there. But we're looking looking pretty good here. Don't have a whole lot of <clears throat> space between the frame and the A arms, but this guy doesn't have much much suspension travel anyway, so. I think that'll be fine. I can cut off whatever I need. I'll start cutting off the back. Trimming, trimming, trimming. Everything's getting lighter and lighter the more I work on it. The more material that I remove. Especially the golf cart with this aluminum frame. It's ridiculously light. But uh, the heaviest part's going to be this bike motor. So, well, I'm going to carry on and uh, I'll keep you updated. Okay, it's the first cut. Cut that hunk out of there. Um, just use the sawzall, a nice long blade, nice coarse blade for cutting the aluminum. It's going pretty close, pretty good. Um, it's not a perfect cut, but it's pretty pretty good. I can go finish up that and clean it up with a, a flapper wheel later on a grinder. Nice coarse sand flap disc. And uh, I'll go cut the other side and make this side the same. Stay tuned. Okay, well, I'm up to here. And yeah, things are not going too well. I'm trying to get this to fit in here. The side cover of the motor. I tried notching the frame out. I do have it quite a bit forward. I do have to say I've, I'm past my 10. Almost at a 12 inch. Which is really good. That means I only have to bring the front end a little bit more. But I think I can actually move the back wheels up a little farther. I'm thinking about repairability and re maintenance on this thing. And I think I'm going to end up just cutting the whole back end of this frame right off. I'm going to probably cut it somewhere here. I'm just going to cut this whole thing off. I'll be able to move this slightly a bit, bit more forward. Give myself another inch maybe. And I will make this bolt on. I'll probably weld some brackets down. Make some nice heavy brackets. Bolt them onto the frame. I'll put a cross member underneath. Bolt to the original part of the frame down there. Make some good heavy cross members and supports. Probably bring something up. 
from the sides here up to the frame or something like that or bring something across and down I don't know but uh, I need to but I think when I'm done I'll be able to just unbolt the whole back end of the motor and roll it out if I need to work on it probably you know open the body and uh, things like that well I hacked almost all the frame off this thing which is not what I wanted to do but I think this is going to work pretty good. I got this cardboard. I'm making a template. It's going to fit here. I'll be able to pick up the holes. I'm going to drill right through the frame here. I'm going to use a nice, probably 3 8 or half inch plate to make that out of. That'll secure that front half. And um, here, like I said, I'll put some, bolt down some nice steel tubing, bring it up and weld it to the frame here to give it some good strength. I might bring, like I said, something up from the back and the sides. It's not uh, what I wanted, but the frame of this thing is quite strong and it's going to give me something to at least build off of for seats and things like that. So, shifters, eh, looking like they're going to be in the way of the leg. So, Either I have to cut that guy off, and my gas pedal is right there underneath. Probably not going to be very comfortable to drive, so. Probably end up cutting that off. Or something. I'm relocating it. Get my seat built in here. I'm going to shorten the wheel. I'm going to shorten this down a little bit, too. Carry on. Tomorrow, maybe. I've done nothing but make a giant mess in here. Tools and crap and pieces of steel everywhere. Aluminum. But that's where we're at. We're definitely shorter. We are short. I think I got about five inches of shortening up on the front, which is a lot. The thing's going to be really stubby. But it's going to be kind of cool when it's done. Okay, we're back. In the, uh, back in the garage with the project here I've made some brackets these guys right here I'm going to use those along with that center motor mount bolt that's there that guy right in the center and it goes right in there in that hole right there so I'm going to use those brackets bolt them down to the aluminum and I'll obviously have to trim away this little bit of seat uh, I-beam frame so that the swing arm clears it but that's not a big deal these guys are suspended out I'll throw one on there just to kind of show you how it's gonna look okay so the idea here is to slide that bolt through there and bolt this bracket down onto the frame trimming away whatever little bits there to make clearance and I got a bracket for the other side as well. We'll put one on the other side. That should be a really strong connection point for this thing since it's an actual motor mount through the frame, everything else. And then uh, that'll be connection point one. And then uh, the plate that I had to go across, I did make one, but I think I might abandon that idea and I may go with something underneath the cart. Um, with a cross member that's connected to the front of that motorcycle frame so I'm gonna carry on here and keep you updated as I go okay I've got my brackets on well I've got them bolted to the motor but I just clamped it vice grip clamped it to the frame I've trimmed my frame back to clear the swing arm now this thing still pivots in the center when I let the jack out so I still need to do something in this for this end. This this piece here, it goes right up under here, about this far. So, what I'm going to do is I had a I was going to make a plate that goes across here. I'm going to revisit that idea again. And I'm going to use a piece of flat bar. I'm going to trim it so it fits inside this cutout. And then, okay, I'm going to fit in that cutout. And I'm going to cut this off here so that it sits down lower. It's going to sit on a little bit of an angle because these 
brackets in here, these little threaded holes are on an angle and I'm going to weld a tab on top and the tabs will be slightly twisted compared to the angle of the frame underneath so I think it's all going to work out. I kind of have it in my mind that it's going to work out. Um, I'm going to get to building it, see how it turns out. I think it'll work all right. Like I said, I'll bolt that down, I'll drill this bolt it down first and then I'll have my tabs hanging over and I'll tack them on that angle that I need and then weld them solid. All right, here we go. Okay, here's what I got here. I bolted this down, I cut, bolted this guy down. This is overlapping. And I drilled and tapped these right into the frame. So it's pretty thick aluminum. Drilled and tapped for now because uh, if I find it's not strong enough, I'll throw nuts underneath. This one back here, I think I will drill and and put nuts under it, just because I can actually get to them easier. These ones I can't. Uh, but with all these points, these anchor points, I think it's going to be pretty strong. I've got this bolted to the frame here. Uh, I thought about joining these together, but I think I'm leaving them separate is going to be better. That way, I can take this bar off if I need to to re re to repair anything. So here's the angle difference here. See that overlap there? So I'm going to try welding this corner first. And then I'm going to maybe throw a little thick beads underneath and then build up my weld and try to maintain that twisted angle that's on there. And I'll do the same on this side. Um, I'll just tack it, tack it, keep on tacking it with my little MIG welder. And then I'll probably, once I get the thing to hold its shape, I'll take it off, weld the back side really well, weld the front really well. Um, like I said, the welding likes to pull things and twist them. It's going to be hard to keep it straight, but I'm going to try my best and I'll see how it turns out. Okay, looks like it turned out okay. Got my angles in there. I'm going to do a little grinding to clean it up a bit, but uh, I ran out of wire in my MIG, so I had to switch over to old Bertha over there and stick weld the rest of it. So we filled that in. There was a lot to fill in there, but uh, I think I got her. And uh, instead of just going to pretty it up, smooth out some of the welds, grind it down a little bit. It's still hot, don't want to touch it, but it uh, looks okay. I think it's going to be fine. It's going to be just fine. Got that nice angle there. So we'll put her on and see what happens. Okay. Got the new bracket on and I'm now drilling and bolting down the previous side brackets that I built earlier. I'm getting pretty excited here. I'm going to just film me drilling the last bolt, tapping it, kind of show you some of my techniques. It's pretty quick as long as you got some sharp drill bits. Uh, I have some, I've been doing this for many years so I'm pretty good at it. I'm going to shut that heater off so you can hear me and see. Okay, oh, I've got my drill here, and i got a tap, I've got my tap drill, i got the clearance drill, and I've got my pilot hole. Now, probably I'm going to say to people, you should be measuring, I've been doing this, I'm eyeballing this guy, I've done three of them, four, I don't know how many bolts now so far. I'm not worried about getting started here. the steel and then through the web of the aluminum right through the bottom so now I'm gonna run my tap drill through size for threading Run that through both holes. Now here's the thing is I've got my plate. I don't want threads in this one. I just want the threads underneath. So I'm gonna run my clearance drill. This is where you gotta be careful. It's where experience comes into play. Just go down enough. I can see in there that I 
almost went to the aluminum. Throw my, this is uh, something you have to be careful of. You can break taps real easy. I am doing aluminum and I'm using a little bit of, a little bit of lube. Any kind of penetrating oil or cutting oil would be good. Bang, that's it. Didn't even hardly take any time at all. Got my bolt, 3 8 16 is what I'm using. Bang. So, I did say I was gonna put these bolts and put nuts underneath. I think what I'm gonna do later on, I just wanna get this together now, I'll probably drill right through and put the nuts underneath. Uh, I'm gonna see how this is. Maybe I'll put another, another two more bolts on the other side of the web. Uh, this should be pretty strong. Uh, definitely easier to take apart if I have to. I just zip these out. Um, I'm going to uh, get ready to take the jack out now for the first time. Getting excited. Okay, here goes nothing. First time the vehicle is now one unit. Hopefully sitting on its front and rear wheels. Let this down. Looks good. That's what I'm talking about. We have a full on one piece machine. Okay, well, I'm going to stop here for today. Got her up on jack stands. I'm, uh, I just hooked up the brakes, so I do have brakes now. Rear, one rear drum brake. Uh, the way this thing's designed, it just has a brake on one side. Good enough to try things out, but uh, most important, brakes do work. I need a return spring for the pedal, but uh, we'll tackle one thing at a time. So brakes are hooked up. Uh, next, I guess throttle maybe, or uh, the gear linkage is the biggest culprit in this thing. It looks like a big mess, but sort this all out slowly and. Uh, Work from there, keep going, looking good. It is rolling, I could technically drive this thing now. If I could put a gas tank on her and get her fired up. But uh, we're gonna wait till we're a little more complete before that happens. Okay guys, here we are, another day, back in the shop here. We are looking good, we got some stuff hooked up here, got a lot of mess, but uh, we got brakes. We got, uh, we hooked up our brakes here. It's pretty easy to do. The cable here kind of came up through this bracket here and it kind of came around up to where used to be the foot pedal there. So I just, this is kind of like a tubing. I just straightened it out a little bit and ran it underneath. See if I can show as best as I can under here. What it looks like, but uh, so here we are underneath. That, that's my return spring. I've got the cable right up and what I did is I welded the actual bracket there that was uh, the cable, I don't know what you want to call that bracket, the hole that holds the cable where your nut tightens onto and just ran the cable up forward. I got some other cables hanging down here but there's our brake mechanism so it runs up to a rod and I made up that bracket there connected it to the cable, got the spring kind of on there as well. Spring runs back here to pull everything back because the spring on the actual mechanism, the back of the quad rear end not, doesn't have a lot of travel. So there's a, I've got the, the pedal working here and I've even got my, my parking brake works. Just a matter of setting it up. That rod that runs from the the brake pedal mechanism back to the cable, it's threaded. The cable itself is threaded, so there's lots and lots of adjustment. I got all kinds of it. But I push this down, full braking is right about there. I can push the lock, push it down, reduce, release it, and the uh, spring pulls it back. So today, I'm gonna work on some other shifting options. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna ace the old uh, Original shifter. I really, really wanted to use this thing, and if I were making this golf cart at a standard length, 
this whole sis situation, like this whole area here would have been back further, a uh, regular golf cart length, and I probably could have kept that in the center of the two seats, which would have made good for a shifter mounting position. But in my case, because I'm trying to shorten this whole vehicle up, I'm going to have to come up with something else. So I've been messing around with the cables. I've been moving cables around. I took the longer cable off the rear diff, you know, the low high range, and I moved it. I thought maybe I could, you know, bring it down here and have it close to the floor. But so I think I'm going to just mount a short lever in here on this guy for the high low range, and I'll just use it when uh, when I need to, you know, like. If I, if I feel the need, I need to change the range on this thing, I'm just going to lift the seat, reach in here, and put it to medium or low. But this whole thing is geared pretty low. Like, I've already ridden it just as a quad, and in high range, it's got a lot of low end torque. Uh, I don't see myself ever needing to, to change that unless maybe I'm towing a trailer or something. But I don't think that's even going to happen. So I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to take this cable right off, disconnect it. I'm gonna leave that lever away. So all I have to do is uh, run the, the gears, which is here. What I've done here is I've pushed it down and you saw that when I was showing the brake lever, it was hanging out underneath. The, underneath. Uh, I'm gonna try to get a shifter up through the floor somewhere around here beside the accelerator pedal. For my my gears, my one through five, and the reverse. This is the uh, yeah. I got a pair of vice grips on it. I technically could drive this thing now if I just sat. Have had a seat here, I could get it going and drive it. This guy here is my forward reverse. Uh, I might maybe use like a plunger of some sort, like a like a choke lever somewhere out here. I'm gonna be cutting this off. Cutting this off here. Uh, putting in a board here like for my first part start of my body and maybe like a choke lever some sort of style like that uh, maybe I'll paint it a different color or something I'm I'll cross that bridge when I get to it um, reverse doesn't get used a whole lot but you need it especially in a vehicle like this so we're gonna keep on working and uh, keep you posted see you later okay uh, not super productive today, but I do have the throttle hooked up, which is a huge milestone because it was kind of difficult to do. I was wondering how I was going to do it, but uh, we've got uh, gas and brake. That's uh, one huge step. Um, I tried to use little bits and pieces from donor bike here and trying to hook, in, hook the gas pedal from the golf cart to the throttle cable of the of the, the quad but it was nothing was working so when that usually happens you got to kind of start from scratch so I wrote, wrote routed the uh, cable down through my down behind the frame here underneath and I've got it no, it's kind of shaky sorry but uh, got it hooked up to the throttle linkage here some light on the subject so I've got, I made this little bracket here. Where am I? There we are. To grab the cable. And this was the original, actually this is where the spring was attached here, this hole, I think. And this uh, linkage actually went back towards the back of the cart where the electronics, or not electronic, but the speed controller was. But yeah, it works really well. Hard to, it's hard to activate here, but I used that hole and I just ran the cable in there couple of washers. I had to cut a slits in the side of the washers to fit it over and I made this custom little bracket here. See it there. Got a nice little slit in it to get the cable into it. Little, I don't know what you call those things, those little lead ends there, but it uh, works really well. So it's hard to pull from down here, but uh, up top it works really well. Um, I do have to set the stop or some sort of stop because uh, full throttle the pedal goes just a little farther than the maxed out in the uh, the plunger I guess my adjustments I don't have a whole lot of adjustment I guess I could make it a little longer I do maybe I'll do that but right about 
there I can hear the plunger and it's got another I don't know half an inch of travel there so best to I'll probably back that guy off underneath make it a little longer and uh, give us some more travel there so that's it so that's that done that's uh, next thing to do really is to get that shifter hooked up and maybe a gas tank and get the thing started up at least get some seats on here start putting some body together slowly but surely it's coming together um, I don't know if I had mentioned this earlier I bought some wheels for the front I bought a some 12 inch wheels to kind of give it a larger look narrower look too because I'm going for that Willie's Jeep look so but uh, we want to space these guys out further and you can buy wheel spacers on eBay or Amazon whatever and it just takes the wheel and spaces it out two inches or whatever brings it out but the only problem with that is you're steering now your wheel is swinging more and it wants to hit up inside so I might tackle something a little different do things a little differently like I always do to keep the steering geometry the same and these brackets here I might try to make these two inches longer for top and bottom and see what happens there in fact I might be able to use the top one on the bottom without having to do anything with it because it is kind of an offset bracket but uh, We'll cover that later on, it's something else I'm thinking about doing. I may wait until a long time from now to do that. We'll see how much time I've got once this thing gets closer to completion. Right now, I know that's gonna work. It just doesn't look, you know, you got that, you want that look to be, you know, you got the back wheels to be flush with the body panels kind of thing, so. Carry on and uh, we'll just, See how it goes. See you later. If it runs a road or coach your food, broken in half or a little skewed, shop talk helps now. Listen, dude, if it doesn't fit. But if I